we gather together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dearly beloved in Christ, I welcome you to this Eucharistic celebration on the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today happens to be Mission Sunday. The Mission Sunday is celebrated on the Sunday before the last in the month of October, the penultimate Sunday in October every year. So today, as we celebrate Mission Sunday, our message is a message of hope that we who are called to proclaim to the nations the message of Christ are hopeful that the Lord will restore us according to his promises to our original state and will help us to come to the fullness of joy in eternity in his presence. To be able to celebrate this Mass worthily, let us pause for a while, remembering those moments we have failed to live our lives as men and women of hope. Those moments we have not been faithful in bringing Christ's message to the ends of the earth. Those moments we have seen by virtue of our thoughts, words, and actions, let us ask for pardon and for mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly listened in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask for the blessed Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. On this Mission Sunday, we pray specifically for all who walk in the missions, those who walk in mission territory and under very difficult conditions. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Trial Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord says this, Shout with joy for Jacob. Hail the chief of nations. Proclaim, praise, shout. The Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them back from the land of the north and gather them from the far ends of earth. All of them, the blind and the lame, women with, ch with child, women in labor. A great company returning here. They had left in tears. I will comfort them as I lead them back. I will guide them to streams of water by a smooth path where they will not stumble. For I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest has been taken out of mankind and is appointed to act for men in their relations with God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins, and so he can sympathize with those who are ignorant or uncertain because he too lives in the limitations of weakness. That is why he has to make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor on himself, but each one is called by God as Aaron was. Nor did Christ give himself the glory of becoming high priest, but he had it from the one who said to him, you are my son. Today I have become your father. And in another text, you are a priest of the order of Melchizedek and forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus left Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar was sitting at the side of the road. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and to say, Son of David, Jesus, have pity on me. And many of them scolded him and told him to keep quiet. But he only shouted all the louder, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him here. So they called the blind man. Courage, they said. Get up. He's calling you. So train off his cloak. He jumped up and went to Jesus. Then Jesus spoke. What do you want me to do for you? Rabuni, the blind man, said to him, Master, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has saved you. And immediately his sight returned, and he followed him along the road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Dearly beloved in Christ, this year as a parish, we chose as our harvest team, the team, Harvest of Divine Restoration. Harvest of Divine Restoration. It can be seen in two ways, or it could be said to be twofold. Divine Restoration in line with 
Christ's mission and the mission of the church to restore humanity to his original state. Yes, Christ came that man who was created in the image and likeness of God but lost that state through the sin of Adam will be restored. And so the church fathers tell us that God became man so that man might become God. We were created in his image and likeness. Man was created originally to live for all time. But death entered into the world through the sin of one man, as we are told. But through the yes and obedience of another man, eternal life is offered to us. So the messianic mission can be said to restore that which was lost, that which was broken or damaged by the sin of Adam. And that is why we are told in Galatians 4.4 4, that at the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman, under the law to redeem those under the law. I want to be tempted to say to restore those under the law. The second way of looking at our harvest team, harvest of divine restoration, is to pray the Lord of the harvest to restore us as a people, as a nation, a nation that has been broken, a people who are beginning to lose hope, a people in despair, a people who suffer under bad governance. And it's aimed principally at our youth, our youth and children seem not to have any hope. Our youths are leaving the shores of this country. Some of them are traveling across the desert, across the Mediterranean, risking their lives, looking for greener pasture, looking for a comfortable environment where the work of their hands can be justified or they can reap the produce of their labor. Yes, it is that bad. Our young men and women graduate from the university and after years of hard work, struggles in the midst of strikes and closures, they can't find jobs. Our entrepreneurs cannot make a living from their struggles. Our government have come up with policies that frustrate people. And it's so hard for people to live. So our story could be likened to the story of the Israelites who were in exile and had lost hope. And that is the setting of our first reading today from the prophecy of Jeremiah. The people had lost hope. But the Lord said to them, shout with joy for Jacob. Hail the chief of the nations. He promises them a future. He promises them restoration. The Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them back from the land of the north and gather them from the far ends of the earth. We were all created to be children of God. And our destiny, our final end is to be with him in eternity. 
But sin has brought separation. Christ the Messiah came to restore that which was broken. So this first reading can be seen from the historical context of the people who have been separated from Jerusalem returning to their homeland. But the sense of splendor, the fullness of this message is in Christ the Messiah restoring us to the Lord. And our gospel reading is also a story of restoration. Bartimaeus, the blind man, heard Jesus and he said to him, Son of David, Jesus, have pity on me. He called him Son of David. He recognized him as the Messiah, the one that had been spoken of by the prophets, the one who would restore the kingdom. He called him Son of David, the anointed one, the Savior. And the people shouted him down. The story of Bartimaeus can be a story. When you seek restoration, when you seek to want to experience communion with God, they will shout you down. But we are told that he shouted all the louder, Son of David, have pity on me. And the Lord heard his cry. And he said, call him here. Now the same people who had shouted him down will now say, courage, he is calling you. And the Lord asked him, what can I do for you? And he said, Master, let me see again. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, as a nation, we need to tell the Lord, Son of David, have pity on us. Let us see again. Restore the joy of our salvation. Restore our land. Restore the hope of our youth. Restore our fortunes. Restore our economy. Today, we are like Bartimaeus. Many of us have lost sight of God. Many of us have gone astray. We have chosen to take our salvation or our destiny in our own hands. And our hands have failed us. Many are laboring, but they have nothing to show for it. And the psalmist tells us today in Psalm 126 that those who go out sowing in tears shall come back, reaping the harvest in joy. This should be our story in Jesus' name. That the young men and women who labor, who suffer, the young entrepreneurs, our pensioners, men who had slept for this land, will reap the fruit of their labor. That they will come back singing with joy. Our people should be rewarded for their hard work. So today, as we seek restoration as a broken people, people who have sinned against God, we also pray for restoration that the Lord will have pity on us. The prayer for Nigeria in distress, some Catholics have stopped saying this prayer because they think the Lord has abandoned us more than ever before. We need this prayer. Like Bartimaeus, we need to say, Lord, 
habit on our land. Because the people are broken. The people are broken. And there is no other name. We are told in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12. Through which salvation shall come to man, except by the name of Jesus. And so we see in our second reading, from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 5, that the high priest is taken from amongst men to offer sacrifice, first for himself and for the others for the forgiveness of sins. And that is what we do every time we celebrate Mass. That on this altar we offer the ultimate sacrifice that Christ who had paid the price, the Messiah, the ideal and perfect high priest, will hear our prayers and restore us. And this is the message we should bring to the ends of the earth. And that is what Mission Sunday is all about. Like I said at the beginning of the Mass, the penultimate Sunday, the Sunday before the last in the month of October every year, the Universal Church calls us to pray for the missions, young churches, new areas, and poor areas, that the Word of God will be taken to these areas. The church calls us to use our talents, our treasure, to support the missions, to contribute funds that will be sent to the Pontifical Mission Society, the mission in charge of the propagation of the faith, so that these funds will be used to support these poor churches, these young churches, these churches facing trials and persecution. Dearly beloved in Christ, let us use that which we have to bring about the spread of the faith. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, in his mission, in his message, on Mission Sunday tells us, drawing from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 20, that we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. Reminding us that all of us are called to be missionaries. The church exists, quoting St. Paul VI, Pope St. Paul VI, that the church exists for mission. That is why the church exists. Each one of us is called to take the message of Christ to the ends of the earth. So we need to use our resources. We need to use our talents to bring this message of hope, this message of restoration to the ends of the earth. Today, let us ask the Lord to renew us, to restore us, to restore our faith and our hope that we will not allow the brokenness of our world to take away our faith and our hope, that we remain men and women of faith and hope, and we who have experienced this and the love of God will not stop speaking about that which we have experienced, that which we have seen, that which we have heard. May the Lord continue to strengthen and restore us. This is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the night the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are the people the Lord has saved. As we follow him along his way of faith, let us lift up our hearts to his Father in prayer. For the bishops and priests who teach and lead God's people, we pray, O oh Lord. For all judges and magistrates who administer the laws of our nation, we pray, O oh Lord. Hear our humble prayer. Mercy on your people, Lord. For people suffering from failing eyesight or blindness, we pray, O oh Lord. For joyous faith in the Holy Spirit and for our private intentions, let us talk to the Lord in the silence of our hearts. We pray, O oh Lord. Hear our humble prayer. Mercy on your people, Lord. Let us now say the prayer for Nigeria in distress. All powerful and merciful Father, you are the God of justice, love, and peace. You, you rule over, over all, all the nations, nations of the earth. earth. Power and might are in your hands, and no one can withstand you. We present our country, Nigeria, before you. We praise and thank you, for you are the source of all we have and are. 
We are sorry for all the sins we have committed and for the good deeds we have failed to do. In your loving forgiveness, keep us safe from the punishments we deserve. Lord, we are weighed down, not only by uncertainties, but also by moral, economic and political problems. Listen to the cries of your people who confidently turn to you. God of infinite goodness, our strength in adversity, our health in weakness, our comfort in sorrow. Be merciful to us, your people. Spare this nation, Nigeria, from chaos, anarchy, and doom. Bless us with your kingdom of justice, love, and peace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, as we lift our hearts to you in humble supplication, so we prepare to return to, your, to you our love and gratitude in the Eucharist of your Son, our eternal High Priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, dear people of God, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service, may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now, possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the, in the name, name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Alfred, Adewale Martin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Thou the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. And my soul shall be healed. And the body and blood of Christ bring us to the last in life. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We come to sing at the table of love. We come to sing at the table of love. We come to sing all the songs we know. To bring our love, to bring our love. That you have given us, Lord, that to be blessed. Why do you have shared with us, Lord, that to be blessed. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, 
O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Prayer for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. O oh God, our help in ages past, we, your children, humbly implore your mercy at this time of adversity. We are devastated by the coronavirus pandemic that is ravaging the whole world, snuffing life out of your people and spreading fear everywhere. You are the God of life, and nothing is impossible to you. You ask us to call on you in the day of trouble, and you will answer us. We know that we are sinners who are unworthy of your favors. Although we have no merits of our own to plead before you, we stand on the merits of the death and resurrection of Christ and plead the saving blood over our lives and situation. We ask you to be merciful to us and save us from this scourge that is devastating the world. Be gracious to us and speak life and healing into the present coronavirus scourge and command it to depart from our world. Give leaders of governments and scientists divine wisdom and knowledge to take the right decisions and to discover the medication needed to cure people who are infected with this virus. Protect all health workers and volunteers. Look with pity on those who are already infected with this deadly virus and heal them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died from it and comfort those they left behind to mourn their demise. Lord, through this scourge, may the hearts of many be turned back to you, their Creator. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick. Pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel. Pray for us. All angels and saints of God. May Our Lady, Mother of the Church, the health of the sick, intercede for the whole world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessings, again, I would want to say a big thank you to our liturgical functionaries. Thank you for supporting the missions with your time and your talents. We wish to say a big thank you to our chief collaborators, helping to propagate the good news by making it possible for us to reach you every Sunday on channel 112 of Go TV. We thank the management and staff of R2 TV. As we celebrate Mission Sunday today, we say thank you for using your treasure Thank you for using your time. Thank you for using your talent to bring about this transmission of this Mass to others. May God bless you as you do this wonderful job. Thank you for all the sacrifices you make to make this possible. May he bless and prosper the work of your hands through Christ our Lord. Amen. And to you, our dear viewers who participate in this Mass, thank you too for your time. And we pray that you, in your own little corner, 
will continue to be the voice, to continue to be the one who will encourage others, saying to them, courage, as we all continue to ask the Lord to have mercy on us. Please, though you may not be able to come to Mass, you may still be able to use your treasure to support the missions, especially as we celebrate Mission Sunday. Collections are being held in every parish to be sent to Propaganda Fide for the propagation of the message, the faith, to those corners of the world where missionaries are working under difficult conditions, those churches that are poor, those churches that are new. So please feel free to approach your parish priest, contact your parish priest, so that you'll be told how to support the Mission Sunday collection as these collections are sent to Rome. God bless you as you do this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.